The use of lasers, at least in weaponized lasers. High energy laser systems. Powerful lasers. Laser weapons have been a part of science fiction for decades, but they are now a reality in modern warfare. In fact, the widespread use of laser technology has spiraled into an arms race. Lasers are devastating, extremely accurate, and because they don't need ammunition, they can continuously fire for hours on end. China, Russia, and the U.S. have developed lasers to take out drones and planes. They have developed ones that can operate from space. But nobody has been able to create a personalized laser weapon that acts similar to a rifle. This type of weapon is truly out of science fiction and previously thought impossible due to the high levels of heat and energy needed. The Pentagon has just revealed something that scientists thought was impossible. Join us as we explain the Pentagon's new tiny laser weapon that changes everything. Before we go into details, it's important to know something about laser weapons that explains the sudden increased interest in using them. Lasers have the perfect blend of characteristics to make them the ultimate weapons. They are extremely fast, traveling at the speed of light. This means that there's almost no delay between when you fire a laser weapon and when it hits its target. This can be very useful for hitting things that are moving quickly, such as drones or missiles. These things are hard to hit with normal weapons because they can change their direction or speed before the bullet or rocket reaches them. But with laser weapons, you can hit them almost instantaneously and destroy them before they change course. Another feature of laser weapons is that they are very cheap. They do not need any bullets, rockets, or other ammunition, which can be expensive and run out quickly. As long as they have a power source, they can keep firing as many times as they want. Experts estimate that each shot of a laser weapon could cost as little as one dollar, which is much cheaper when compared to other weapons. Ukraine, for example, was reportedly spending $140,000 to $500,000 on each surface-to-air missile it used to take out $20,000 in Russian drones in early 2023. An anti-drone laser weapon could slash the cost of defending the skies. A third feature of laser weapons is that they are very flexible. They can be adjusted to cause more or less damage, depending on the situation. You can increase or decrease the power of the laser, or you can fire it for a longer or shorter time. This way you can choose how much you want to hurt your target, or if you just want to scare them or disable them. You can also use laser weapons for different purposes, such as defense, offense, or communication. You can mount them on different platforms, such as trucks, ships, or planes. You can even use them in different weather situations, such as rain, fog, or dust. Lately, there's been a significant increase in the development and funding of directed energy weapons, which encompass laser and other electromagnetic energy-based weaponry. Over 30 countries, including China, India, the UK, and notably the United States, with an annual investment of $1 billion, are actively engaged in advancing these technologies. This heightened interest in laser weapons is primarily driven by evolving trends in modern warfare. Lane McKinney, Director of Science and Technology at Raytheon Technologies, said that high-energy laser systems are a better match to the threats we now face versus the threats 10 or 20 years ago. Now, despite making significant progress on laser weapons, the U.S. military has yet to figure out how to put them to use for its soldiers. This is partly because the weapons are large, expensive, and contain delicate components, and partly because they're so different from any other weapons in their arsenal. But this could change now, as a new laser weapon has been developed by a company called Northrop Grumman, and it has been delivered to the U.S. Department of Defense. The weapon is called the Phantom, and it is a small and portable laser weapon that can be used in different places and situations. The Phantom is about the same size as a small refrigerator, and it weighs only 200 pounds. This means that two soldiers can carry it and move it around easily. The Phantom is also very strong and tough, and it can work in harsh conditions, such as dust, rain, or heat. The Phantom needs electricity to work, but it does not use a lot of power. It is a 10-kilowatt laser weapon, 
which means that it can produce 10,000 watts of energy. This is not as much as some other laser weapons that the U.S. military has, such as the 300 kilowatt laser weapon that was made by Lockheed Martin in 2022. But the Phantom is still powerful enough to do some damage. It can shoot down small and medium-sized drones, which are becoming more common and dangerous in the modern world. Drones can be used to spy, attack, or deliver weapons, and they can be hard to stop with normal weapons. But the Phantom can hit them with a beam of light and make them fall from the sky. Robert Fleming, Northrop Grumman's VP and General Manager of Strategic Space Systems said, by miniaturizing this advanced capability, we are expanding the reach of our technology and continuing to lead the way in high energy lasers. The truth is that while laser weapons have many advantages over traditional weapons, such as speed, accuracy, and low cost, they also have some serious disadvantages, especially when it comes to ethical and humanitarian implications of using them against people. Laser weapons can burn, blind, or cut through human flesh and organs, and they can also damage the nervous system, the brain, or the eyes. Laser weapons can also be used to target civilians, infrastructure, or cultural heritage, and they can cause environmental harm or fires. The use of laser weapons is illegal under international law. There is a United Nations protocol that was adopted in 1995 called the Protocol on Blinding Laser Weapons that bans the use of laser weapons to intentionally blind enemies, either temporarily or permanently. The protocol is part of the Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons, which aims to protect civilians and combatants from excessively injurious or indiscriminate weapons. The protocol has been ratified by 109 countries, including the United States, China, and most of the European Union. However, the protocol is not enough to regulate the use of laser weapons because it only covers one specific aspect of laser weapons and it does not address the other types of harm or damage that laser weapons can cause. The protocol is also outdated because it was made before the development and advancement of laser weapons in the past decades. The protocol does not cover the new types of laser weapons that have been created, such as high-energy lasers, low-energy lasers, or laser dazzlers. The protocol also does not cover the new ways of using laser weapons, such as for offense, defense, or communication. Moreover, the protocol is not effective because it is not enforced or monitored by any international body or mechanism. The protocol relies on the goodwill and compliance of the states that have signed it, but there is no way to verify or investigate if they are following the rules or not. There is also no way to punish or sanction the states that violate the protocol or use laser weapons against people. And today, countries like Russia and Turkey are already using these weapons. For now, the U.S. still has a lot of questions it wants answered before it deploys laser weapons. How deadly are these systems? How much damage can they cause to different types of targets, such as people, vehicles, or buildings? How can they avoid harming innocent civilians or friendly forces? How reliable are they at different scales? How well do they work at different distances, angles, or altitudes? How do they fit into the military strategy and tactics? How do they work with other weapons, such as guns, rockets, or missiles? How do they communicate with other systems, such as radars, sensors, and satellites? How do they deal with countermeasures, such as jamming, decoys, or shields? These are some of the questions that the U.S. military needs to answer before it can use laser weapons in real combat situations. As we collect our data over the next couple of years, I believe we'll have the right set of data to again inform the next big decisions for the Army," said Rash. Lasers are going to be on the battlefield of the future, we know it. But at what point do we go all in at first? New laser weapon platforms are now being deployed for operational evaluations in various locations. For instance, 10 kilowatt laser weapons have been deployed to Africa Command, Central Command, and Indo-Pacific Command. Additionally, a 20 kilowatt system is on its way to CENTCOM, as revealed by Major General Sean Ganey, who leads the Pentagon's Joint Counter-Small Unmanned Aerial Systems Office. 
This office is primarily focused on adopting advanced technologies to counter small drones and swarms of unmanned aerial systems. As Major General Ganey explained at the Space and Missile Defense Symposium, that higher kilowatt levels, when coupled with effective beam control, can lead to faster elimination of certain UAS targets. This capability enables operators to swiftly transition between multiple targets and engage more advanced ones. The Pentagon has also been testing and developing various laser systems for different applications and domains. For instance, the Navy has deployed the laser weapon system on board the USS Ponce, a transport ship, to demonstrate its ability to shoot down drones and small boats. The Army has also tested the High Energy Laser Tactical Vehicle Demonstrator, a truck-mounted system that can engage multiple aerial threats. The Air Force has been working on the Self-Protect High Energy Laser Demonstrator, or SHIELD, a pod-mounted system that can protect aircraft from incoming missiles. The JCO is coordinating the efforts of the different services and agencies to develop and field effective laser weapons for countering small drones and UAS swarms. The JCO is also responsible for establishing common standards and protocols for the acquisition, testing, and evaluation of such systems. It aims to deliver scalable and adaptable laser solutions that can meet the operational needs and requirements of the warfighters. In the end, while these weapons are a marvel of technology, they might also increase the danger of warfare and lead to even more catastrophes. They could potentially escalate the conflicts and tensions between nations and create new challenges for international law and ethics. These weapons could also pose a threat to civilians and the environment and increase the risk of accidents and malfunctions. If they fall into the wrong hands, they can be used for malicious purposes. There is already an arms race, and the U.S. seems to be leading it at the moment. But any small change can create a new balance of power in the world. In conclusion, laser weapons are not only a tool of war, but also a source of moral and political dilemmas. What do you think about this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below.